Well, hello there, and welcome to another Minecraft tutorial. In this episode, I'm going to show you guys how to build this counter. Now, this is a design for a counter that I haven't seen, but the individual pieces are very well-known circuits in the redstone community, so I'm sure it exists somewhere. But I haven't seen it, which means I haven't made a tutorial on it, and so I'm going to do that now and show you guys how it works. So, a counter is just any circuit that every time you send an input will count up. Now that can mean it'll count up and do things in sequence, or it can mean it literally will just count up. And in this case I do a little bit of both. Um, most counters use hoppers, either you lock a chain of hoppers so that as it moves, um, as an item moves through the chain, it actually increases the position and thus counts up. Um, others have used pistons to move things around, and, and there's a lot with repeater locks. This does none of that. In fact, this hopper isn't even necessary, you just need any inventory here. So, yeah, this uses comparator logic. So, right here is a circuit that I may or may not have made a tutorial about. And what it does is it adds numbers together. So with comparators, you should know by now, you can do subtraction built in, but there's no addition function. And the reason for that is because with a little bit of math, you can actually do addition with just subtraction. So this is how that works. So it's 15 minus your first input, minus your second input, and then whatever that result is, you subtract it from 15 again, and that'll actually add the two numbers together. So it'll add these inputs together. So, we're going to use that to add 1 to the input every time. And how do we do that? Well, we take the output from this, and we pass it back in as, a, as the first input, right? So this uh, powers this block as an output, and then because this block is strongly powered by the comparator, it will power this at the same level. Yes, this redstone connects to this, but it's not going to degrade the signal by 1 because this will actually be str more strongly powered by this block than the redstone. And so, yeah, you're going to get the full signal out into here. So that'll basically just store the output uh, as an input. And then whenever we pulse here, it's going to add that to the existing output. So all we have to do is send a signal strength of 1 into here. Now, if you do it constantly, so if I had a constant signal strength of 1 here, it's going to keep looping around and adding 1, and it's just going to kind of shoot all the way to the end. So we have to limit how much, uh, how long the signal lasts. And so for that, we use this pulse limiter. Now, this is my favorite pulse limiter design, so I'm absolutely positive I've showed it off at least once before in a video. But basically, we have the input coming in here, and it comes into this comparator, and it also goes into this repeater that is on two ticks. So what happens is this comparator has a one tick delay, and then gives the output. And then two ticks, so one tick after this comparator, this repeater will turn on, and that will power this, uh, sorry, that will actually disable this comparator by being subtracted. Um, and the result is you get no signal. So you get signal for exactly one redstone tick or two game ticks. So this is how we limit our input. And then we want to make sure the input is not higher than one, because otherwise we're going to be adding two at a time or three at a time, which you might want for your design, but in most designs counters usually only go up by one each time. So we need a signal strength of one. So for that, we know that the signal coming in from this repeater is going to be 15. And so we need to subtract 14, and that's what this is. So this comparator is coming out of here. This has 4 stacks and 48 of redstone, which is just enough to produce a 14 strength signal. <clears throat> Excuse me. A 14 strength signal. And so when you have 15, uh, a strength of 15 as the input and 14 in the side, and this is on subtract mode, the result is 1. So basically, every time there's an input, you will get a very short pulse of exactly one into here, 
And since this has as the other input has its old output, it'll just add one to the output. And so you'll get a single signal strength larger. I really shouldn't record right after work, but okay. Um, and the good thing about this, or one good thing, is that you also can reset it very easily by sending a full strength signal into the side of this comparator, because this has our output, and so because this is on subtract mode, when you send a 15 strength signal into here, it just completely drops it down to zero, and once this is zero, and this is zero, the whole thing goes back to zero. So, yeah. So if I press this, one. If I press this again, two. If I press this again, three. And so you can see how that works. And because this is actually on a pulse limiter, it doesn't matter how long the signal is. So I could replace that button with a lever. And if I flip that, it'll add one, but it's not going to keep going. It's just going to add one. So it's exactly the kind of thing you want for a counter. Every time the input turns on, it triggers a count. So yeah, that, that's pretty much it. And as I said, this hopper is not necessary. You can use a chest if you want. Just make sure that the output from this comparator is 14. And for those of you who don't know how to check the output of a comparator without placing redstone dust, so if you go to F3, right, and you point on a redstone dust, you'll see on the side it says power zero, right? Or power whatever it is. Um, but you can't do that with comparators. It just says whether it's powered or not. It doesn't tell you the strength. So what you can do is comparators are tile entities, and they store their output in a uh, tag called output signal. So you can just do block data while you're standing on the comparator at your current position, which is the comparator's block and empty tags, and that'll give you the current block data for this comparator, which includes its output signal, which is, of course, the signal strength. So in this case, output signal is 14, and that's exactly what we want. If it's less, we could just add more items into this hopper, or whatever inventory it is. If it's more, then, you know, if it's 15, then we just take items out. Simple enough. Um, so let's reset this, and yes. And it is very important that you do if you're just having an output like this with a single line, it's important that you note that this is based on the signal strength of redstone. So if you don't have this line of redstone dust here, you're not going to get an output except for this first uh, light. So I did that during my first recording because I actually cloned this over from over there just to get it into a nice clean area. And when I did that, I only cloned the first layer and lost all this redstone and couldn't figure out why it wasn't working. Uh, but yeah, so don't forget that. Anyway, I've rambled on. That's how this works. That's how you build this. A comparator logic addition circuit counter. So until next time, keep counting up. Keep redstoning. Wait, I actually did that wrong. Now, keep counting up and keep redstoning.